last night on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Andrew Filipponi, a busy PM team today, as I'm sure phone lines were lighting up all over the place after the news last night, and it really was the first shoe to drop. Russell Wilson agrees to a one-year deal with the Steelers, and the price was too good to pass up. Pony, uh, and, and quite frankly, uh, he's going to be a better option than anything they have currently, which is an easy call to make. But there are other things that I want to ask you about, and that would be, Number one, what happens to Kenny Pickett? Uh, they have a first-round draft pick invested in him. Some guys take a while to acclimate themselves. There is a new offensive coordinator. Many believe that Matt Canada had held him back and was, you know, the play calling wasn't needed to, uh, wasn't what it was. I'm not sure whose fault to blame that is. More on the quarterback, more on the play calling, whatever. But do you think there's a long-term ramification that cost them Kenny Pickett in their future? I know they're trying to win now, but what's it do for him, you know, several years from now? Uh, I don't think it should. Uh, if I'm Mike Tomlin and I'm Arthur Smith or Omar Khan or even Art Rooney, I'm telling Kenny Pickett, look, you've got two years on your contract. The guy we just signed only has one, and it's for the veteran minimum. And we invest, invested a first-round pick on you. It's not over. So they're going to go to camp. They're going to compete. They're going to – Split reps, you would think, in training camp in the preseason. And I would think unless Russell Wilson is dog vomit and is terrible, that he would be the starting quarterback. But much like a postseason baseball game, Bob, where if you lose, you go home, there's usually somebody warming up in the bullpen in the first inning. And that's how I would look at this if I'm Kenny Pickett. I was the first round pick. I'm 26 years old. This guy's 35. They have no obligation to him beyond this year. Yeah, he's won a Super Bowl, and they brought him in because he threw 26 touchdown passes last year. But unless he's great, I'm going to get another shot at this. And that's the mindset and attitude I would have. And if I, I were him, I would think to myself, the second I go back in, I'm never giving this job back. So that's how we should think about it. If he's sulking and he's self-loathing, and he's doing what I heard Ramon Foster mention, which is going to the Steelers and asking for a trade, he's in for a rude awakening. Because no, he's not going to find a market, Bob. There's no, no market for Pickett. If there's no market for Fields, and all Mac Jones got a six-round pick, no one's going to want Kenny Pickett. Right. You, you see what guys are getting. Six round for Mac Jones in the wide receiving category. People talk about Deontay Johnson. Jerry Judy got a fifth and a sixth. That was it. The other thing that if I'm Kenny Pickett, and again, you got to have a good attitude on this. It is a one-year deal, and we'll get into whether or not, you know, which Wilson we're getting here, the one we saw in Seattle for a large portion of his career or the one we've seen recently, the fact that both Seattle and Denver moved away from him, which is of concern, I would think. However, if I'm Kenny Pickett, I also look at this and say, you know what, uh, if I don't play this year, and he is good and whatever the case may be, he goes into next year, and they have an obligation of picking up a fifth-year option. If they don't, that means he's playing to be a free agent. And if he does play next year, say Wilson's not here, or whatever the dynamics are, then he would be much easier to move on if he wants to move on, if he has a good year. There's a lot yet to play out, and I agree with you. You can't have the reverse attitude here and, and feel bad for yourself. You're still in a situation which is a business. You have to react to it, just as all these other guys have done. Right, and look at the, the look at the quarterbacks that got paid today. So Kirk Cousins, a little bit of a different story, but Kirk Cousins, when he started his career, he was a backup because of RG three, and he got a chance, and he obviously parlayed into that in that in that to over three hundred million dollars, Bob. Stunning between the Minnesota Vikings <laughs> and now Stunning. the Atlanta Falcons. Yep. Um, look at Baker Mayfield. This was his fourth team: Browns, uh, Panthers, Rams. Buccaneers five-year million dollar deal he turned it into 110 million dollars then the last guy I'll mention is Gardner Minshew Gardner Minshew got a chance because of an injury in Indianapolis played well not great he signed two-year 25 million dollars today with the Raiders so this should not be it for Kenny Pickett there's still going to be an opportunity down the road for him to play to get a chance play well and get himself a job. Our GMC Sierra tweet of the night comes from Pitt Basketball. Remember, it's ACC Tournament Week. They'll play Thursday because of having a double bye, and these three guys had a lot to do with it. 
First team all ACC for Blake Hinson. How about rookie all ACC? That would be Carlton Carrington, known as Bub, and then the sixth man of the year, and he was really good for them, uh, is Ishmael Leggett, who came over from Rhode Island and has been a really good player for them. So it's tournament week. We'll get into that later in the week, but for now it's all football. I don't see Jalen Lowe on that rookie list. Jalen Lowe yeah. didn't make it? No, not, not first that. team, not first team. I don't know if he made it beyond that, but bottom line well, is. I'm going to tell you something right now. I thought Lowe was better than Carrington, and I know Carrington's got all the NBA hype, and he played a great game against NC State, but if I'm looking at why they're in the spot that they're in, it's Lowe's no transformation question. in play, not Bob Carrington. He has been very decisive on his uh, you know, leadership on the, on the floor with his passes, his assist to turnover ratio is good, and he knows how to, he'll take shots that are high percentage shots. He's not going to throw something up just to throw something up, so I think he's been really good. He's playing well beyond his years. All right, as promised, let's get to the phone lines, beginning with our number one Cochran, go one better caller of the night, and that would be David in Washington. David, how are you tonight? Hello, good. David. Hey, Bob. Hey, Pony. Hey, listen, just a, a couple things. Um, number one, I, I like the Wilson move but it doesn't, in my mind, go far enough. If there's a quarterback in this draft that the Steelers like, go get him. Let's have a, a legitimate competition. And the other thing is, with the, the Kenny Pickett situation, now I'm not there, so I don't know if it's true, but these reports, if he is sulking over this, and I don't know, um, hey, he's the captain of this football team. So when you're a captain, there's some responsibility that comes with that. And if I'm Omar Khan, I'm looking at the other teams in the AFC and the quarterbacks that they have. Hey, we better be going and getting a quarterback that just can't get us to the playoffs, but that can win in the playoffs. Well, here's, here's the thing. Thanks for the call, David. Um, the other thing, if you believe the Steelers are quarterback away from winning a championship, I would have to say to you that you may be uh, off base a little. They have a lot of things to do. They have so many holes that still need to be filled. And... Uh, over the next several months, they'll do that. But this certainly makes them a better team at quarterback right now. I believe that. But I asked, I want to go back to what I said earlier, Andrew. There's a reason Seattle moved on from him. There's also a reason Denver, two years into this, decided they don't want him anymore and they have to eat $85 million and pay him $39 million to pay for another team. There's something wrong with that picture. And I don't know if it's off Sean Payton or not, but it seemed weird how it all ended there. And why did it end that way? I'm still curious. Well, Seattle moved on because Russ didn't want to play there and they were offered a King's ransom by Denver. I don't think they moved on because they were ready to, you know, send Russell Wilson into Puget Sound. I think it was because a team stepped up and made an offer they couldn't refuse and Wilson was cranky there. He didn't want to play football there anymore. He wanted to cook. Do you remember that, Bob? He kept talking about let Russ cook. Mm -hmm. um, but then in Denver, he just was ter I mean, the first year there was a joke. It was a disaster. And then last year was good, but wasn't worth the money and was not a fit in Sean Payton's out offense. So it raises questions about why Sean Payton, who is known as an offensive guru kind of coach, you know, why he's decided to just completely implode that in turn. You know, they gave up two number ones, two number twos, a number five and three players. That's a lot wow. to give up and then give the guy 254, whatever he got. It just doesn't add up to me. There's something wrong with Bob, this. Bob, have you, have you changed your mind? Because I know you preferred going with Mason Rudolph mm -hmm. over Wilson. Do you think this is a better move now, or would you still have preferred Mason? I, you know, I'm still looking future-wise, and I want to find out who's the next future quarterback. I, I think this is a situation where you may, you may have one year of success or better numbers, and, it, you know, they made the playoffs last year, so the expectations will be go farther with him. Uh, and that may happen with him. I'm not going to deny that. But I'm also wondering about what they do next. If Russell Wilson is not here next year, then what? Are you, you know, and if Pickett doesn't play well, do you have to go through this whole process again? I guess that's what I'm concerned about if I'm them. So, you know, these are things, you know, when Trubisky came here, I know because I was one of them who thought that was a good signing. Well, it turned out not to be. Uh, Mason Rudolph was held back because of Mitch Trubisky. Maybe that was a mistake too, Andrew, you know? Well, let's see what happens here again with Mason Rudolph because if two years in a row teams don't show interest, that will tell me that the NFL thinks what happened in the last month of the year was a fluke. You know, we've seen guys have one or two good games and get big deals. Matt Flynn is one of those guys, Rob Johnson, Scott Mitchell. I mean, I think teams maybe have learned from that. 
But it is rather interesting that Mason Rudolph has to wait here, at least through the first day of free agency. And there's even a report from Mike Florio that he says that the Steelers and Mason Rudolph is not dead. He thinks it's still possible he comes back here. Bob, it would have to, the, the market would have to crater on Mason Rudolph again. For, don't you agree? Well, he'd, be, he'd also be, be the, the highest paid quarterback. He would be the highest paid Steeler quarterback, even with Russell Wilson on your roster, which That's a good point. Nuts. I mean, that's possible, yeah. I guess. Yeah. All right, let's go back to the Lions. A lot of people want to get into this. we got The Rock in the Hill District. What's up, Rock? Can I smell what you're cooking? Hey, this is Rob, Bob. But listen, um, I hear all these news, ESPN analysts, and, and some of y'all on the nightly sports talk, y'all say Russell Wilson ain't going to be – He's not going to take us over the top of the AFC North. We're not going to be. We're not going to be the division champ. Did y'all realize we was five and one against the AFC North last year with Mr. Risky and Kenny Pickett and Mason Rudolph? So if Russell, if we got Russell Wilson, why is everybody saying that we're still not going to be in contention for the AFC well, North? Rock, I think it's I, again. I think it's which Wilson you're going to get. He is 35. Uh, I still think he can play. I saw last year, I saw a game against Kansas City. We were upstairs watching it where he went and, and you know, had, a, I think, a three-touchdown, no-interception game. He went to Buffalo and won. There are really good moments there. So I think that can still happen. But I also look at the AFC North and the AFC at large, Andrew. There are some pretty good teams and a lot of good quarterbacks, and the vision is not going to be easy even with Russell Wilson. Yeah, Bengals are a team in transition. They are getting Joe Burrow back, which is huge. And the Steelers went 2-0 and last year without uh, Burrow in the lineup. They feasted on Jake Browning. Uh, but they made moves today. They lost their corner, I believe, to New England. Uh, they brought in Geno Stone from Newcastle. Yeah, that's somebody I wish the Steelers would have brought in. I liked what he did last year, and, you know, they need a safety. You're right. They, uh, the Steelers need another safety. That's exactly right, although they still have KZ on the roster. Mm -hmm. You'd think they'd sign another guy there. Uh, they need corners. They don't have a slot corner. They don't have an outside corner after Peterson was uh, released. They need another wide receiver. They need a center, Bob. Center and all the and centers signed today. Yeah, yeah, that's right. The centers all got signed. I know. So that makes that a big need in the draft, either with pick 20 or pick 51, to find themselves their next franchise center that they've been looking for since Marquise Pouncey retired. Yeah. It's crazy how it all works out. I expect Broderick Jones to move over, and they're going to need someone at right tackle. So they'll probably look in that position as well. Let's go out to Dave in Squirrel Hill, who joins us on line four. Hey, Dave, Hi, Dave. how are you? Oh, good. How are you? Good. What's up? I think this is the equivalent of the Pirates signing A.J. Burnett in 2012. Same kind of impact? Wilson. Yes. I don't disagree yes. with that. I like that analogy. Mm -hmm. I thought about that today on the show today, too, Bob, because – I know it's not the same way that the Yankees paid a lot of his salary. This is even more with Denver, 37.8 million. A lot more. But it's a, <laughs> right, a lot yeah. more. But it's the same scenario where a team is paying a guy to go play somewhere else. And I think that motivated Burnett. Mm -hmm. And he came here with something to prove. And I can see that with Russell Wilson. He's a prideful guy. Yeah. Nine-time pro bowler and future Hall of Famer. And Mike Tomlin is a very good salesman. Believe me, he knows how to get and make people feel that they should be part of this, and, and he in turn feels that they have a chance to win. That's why he wants to be with this team. He chose this team after listening to what the Steelers had to say. So it will be interesting to see how that all plays out. And let's go back to the line. Ron in Johnstown. Hey, Ron, what's up tonight? Yeah, uh, what, what I want to say real quick is I think this is a proving year for Tomlin. you got a former uh, Super Bowl quarterback come in, and he's supposed to be like a player's coach, and they're saying he has baggage coming in with him. So if he's a player's coach, and they always say he's a future Hall of Famer, some of the national media. I think this is a year he proves it and gets us over the hump and maybe get us back to the Super Bowl. Well, I also think Arthur Smith had a good time with him, and, you know, he met with both Pickett and, uh, you know, Russell Wilson. So he, he's going to have a big say in this. And it's similar to what Seattle had when he had, they had a dominant run game, a good defense, borderline great defense yeah. in and out of that time there. Steelers need to still shore up. They have some great players. They need a better – team defense uh, and we'll see what they do in this but back to what Dave the last guy before the break said he used that a good analogy about uh, you know the Pirates and what they did but I there's a part of me that thinks this is like uh, you know maybe Eric Carlson as well we all got excited about Eric Carlson it's not oh, turned out to no. be I'm just saying well that was an expensive one though I, they got to pay Eric Carlson I understand a lot of money that. Bob this but is my one point million. is they brought him on with the thought that he would get them over the hump and a lot of people believed it, so I'm just saying. 
It could go, you know, who knows? It looks good now. Well, uh, let, me, let me just respond to the last caller. I don't think this is a prove it year for Mike Tomlin whatsoever. Prove it means that you've got to win or else. And that is not the case here. They could go 7-10 and 10 with Russell Wilson at quarterback and Kenny Pickett. And nothing's happening to Mike Tomlin, Bob, because he's going to get an extension this summer. Yeah, but I think what the caller meant was... they're not going to fire a guy after one year. I think he's talking about in the playoffs, move on and do something that they haven't done in a oh. while. I think that's what he meant. I don't know. Maybe I was wrong with that. Uh, how much time do we have left, Jeremiah? All right, 40. Any other surprises today, Andrew, with you? I, I see Mixon was cut by the Cincinnati Bengals, which to me a little bit surprising. Anything else surprise you? Well, the, the running back market kind of exploded. Yeah. And they've been talking about how none of those guys get signed. Josh Jacobs gets a big deal. Aaron Jones gets cut as a result of that. Saquon Barkley to Philly. Uh, uh, Tony Pollard to Tennessee. And it looks like Derrick Henry, Bob, might end up with the Baltimore Ravens. How about that? Yeah. And how about Aaron Jones going back to Mike McCarthy? That could happen, too. Who knows? And if you want to get your opinion heard, don't forget to tune in to the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call tonight at 1035 on KDKA+. So give us a call at 412-575-2600. We do it every night after the 10 o'clock news. For CBS News Pittsburgh, I'm Bob Pompiani.